The Surge Dual Universal Slope Generator, or DUSG for short, is a module from the 70s that has attained near mythic status. On the one hand, it's very simple. It's a pair of slew generators, things that slow down the rise and fall of any voltage going through it. On the other hand, there's ways that you can cross-patch the two halves together, play around with their adjustments, patch in signals into different places, and turn it into not just a slew generator, but also an envelope generator, an LFO, a VCO, a sub-octave divider, a wave shaper, sort of a filter, and if you squint at it a certain way, even an envelope follower. So let's go through those many different functions of a universal slope generator. I happen to be using the random source version of it. Serge Shreptin himself consulted with him. This is an updated version that includes most of the modifications most people performed on their original Surge modulars to get more functions out of the DUSG. Now, it's easy to walk up to one of these modules and get very confused, so let me give you some initial starting points on using the random source version in particular that will give you more predictable results. I'll leave both my cycle switches in the up position. I center the voltage control over the rise and fall time. I put both of the exponential switches in their middle positions to start with. That disables these controls temporarily and also gives me linear shapes. And I put the rise and fall time somewhere around about 10 o'clock on the dial. That will give me a nice envelope time that makes sense. I have a simple two VCO patch on the Mother 32 plus a disting. Let me turn up the filter so you can hear it. I have nothing going to the filter cutoff right now because I'm going to be using the slope generator for that in a second. And let's start off just looking at it as a slew generator. I have one of my distings performing as a sample and hold right now. Let me take this random voltage output from its A, put it into its blue signal here on data so you can see what it looks like. I have its rate hooked up to the Mother 32's LFO by using the LFO square output. You can see I can change it to be very fast changing or very slow changing. And initially, if I just patch that straight to my VCF cutoff, I get this typical burbling sound. Now that can be fun for rhythmic effects, but let's say you want something smoother. You want it to not be as hard edged with your random voltages. Well, that's where a slope generator comes in handy. Let's go ahead and preempt this output Instead, grab a copy of my sample hold output and put it to the input on one of my slope generators. Then I'm going to take the output, in this case of the green side, I'm going to put it over to the green trace on my scope so you can keep things separate from each other. And then we'll plug the filter input into the output of the universal slope generator. Let's go ahead and drone the mode for now. Right now it sounds pretty much the same, maybe a little bit softer. But as I change the rise and fall times, I will start to smooth out those steps. Now the times on the DUSG work in the opposite direction that you might expect from many envelope generators. Going counterclockwise slows things down. Now you start to see some slope on the rising edges. And now let's add some slope on the falling edges. So I can go ahead and make it just say the fall slow and the rise fast. Or go the opposite direction and make just the rise slow and the fall fast. Sort of a backward sound. There's a little bit of both. Now the DUSG defaults to linear shape, but if you want a logarithmic or an exponential shape, the old trick was you used to do a feedback patch, taking part of the output, putting it back into the voltage control for the rise and fall times. A lot of people pre-wired that inside their search modules, and that's a function of the random source. If I take something like the rise and flip its expo switch upwards, this now becomes a shape control. I'm going to slow down my LFO, so you can see my rise is better. Slow rise, and now I'll start to give a little bit of a shape. Now you see part of that classic logarithmic rise shape. This 
this shape is a very classic logarithmic. I can change how deep it is by changing the amount of feedback here. Go to linear, or I can make it reverse. This feedback does interact with the time, so as you change this off of 12 o'clock, you will need to change your rise and fall times. Let's go ahead and slow this down further. Let's do the same to the fall side. Give it a bit of shape, slow it down so you can see what's going on. So I have an inverse or exponential rise and an exponential fall. I'll turn to the other side to get a logarithmic rise. Change the time as necessary to compensate. slower. The downward position for the exponential controls give an alternate shape where it cuts off the rise and fall faster. And in fact, I'm going to show that a little bit later when I talk about envelope shapes. But in general, here's the simplest uses for the DUSG, something to smooth out your voltages. You can pass a 1 volt per octave signal through it to go ahead and give you portamental or glide in between notes. Again, change the shape of the glide or use it to smooth out other functions.